the election of Karol Wojtyła, a little-known Polish cardinal from behind the Iron Curtain as Pope in 1978, was an important signal of upcoming changes in Central and Eastern Europe. The outbreak of massive workers' strikes in Poland in the summer of 1980, led by fired electrician Lech Wałęsa, showed the strength of civic solidarity. The August strikes were the first in the history of the Eastern Bloc that ended with the signing of an agreement with the communist government. The Solidarity Movement, with 10 million members, was born in Poland. The events of 1980 began to change the map of Europe and the post-war Soviet bloc began to fall apart. A brutal period of martial law in Poland lasting for a year and a half. The pilgrimage of Pope John Paul II to his still enslaved homeland giving hope for freedom. Another wave of strikes in 1988. The economic crisis. The agreement between state authorities and some representatives of the opposition following the round table talks. All of these paved the way towards the partially free elections in June 1989. Tadeusz Mazowiecki became the first non-communist prime minister and Lech Wałęsa became the president of the Republic of Poland. In May 1988, Janusz Kadar was deprived of power and replaced by Karol Gross. The Hungarians said goodbye to communism through the symbolic funerals of Imre Nodz, the Prime Minister in 1956 who was later sentenced to death. The Hungarian round table talks gave the government to Joseph Anhalt, and after further discussions of the opposition, the newly elected president, Mateusz Soros, declared the independence of the Republic of Hungary in 1989. The terror of the Soviet Army and the Stasi, the East German State Security Forces, was not able to prevent mass defections of East Germans to the West in 1989. Soviet tanks were stopped by Gorbachev, against Honecker's will. The residents of Berlin, watched by the entire world, demolished the Berlin Wall, a symbol of division in Europe and the border of Soviet influence for the previous 28 years. The Kremlin's domination was over. Gorbachev accepted Kohl's politics. Final reunion of Germany ultimately took place in 1990. In November 1989, massive protests in Czechoslovakia started to crush the remaining resistance of the communist authorities. A demonstration known as the Velvet Revolution was led by Vlatslav Havel, a popular and recognized opposition activist and playwright. After becoming president, he proclaimed the Czech and Slovak Federal Republic. He declared the independence of Czechs and Slovaks. Cultural and religious differences led to Vladimir Metzia taking power in Slovakia as a result of the so-called Velvet Divorce. Bulgaria was Moscow's ally for years under Todor Zhivkov. Under pressure from civil protests from December to March 1990, the Bulgarian Round Table Talks were held. An agreement was reached to have free parliamentary elections in June. The Romanian communist dictator, Nicolae Ceausescu, had no intention of relinquishing his power. During the violent riots in December 1989, hated communist symbols were cut out of the national flags. Even after Ceausescu and his wife Elena were executed, crowds still fought with the Romanian state police, Securitate. Doors to the parliamentary and presidential elections were opened in May of 1990. After the collapse of the Eastern Bloc, in the early 1990s, the maps of Europe and Asia regained Lithuania, 
Georgia, Latvia, Estonia, Ukraine, Belarus, Moldova, Azerbaijan, Uzbekistan, Kyrgyzstan, Kazakhstan, Armenia, Tajikistan, Turkmenistan, Russia, Slovenia, Macedonia, Croatia, Bosnia and Herzegovina, Serbia and Montenegro. Started by the Solidarity Revolution in Poland, the quickly changing map of Europe with its free borders opened human minds and freed them from fear. Even though in the early 1990s the actual regaining of sovereignty by the states of the Eastern Bloc was still uncertain, so many barriers between people and nations had never been destroyed so quickly in the post-war history.